pretty fascinating framework, Elliot, but I, I know you think uh, valuation is still part of that equation, right? That's right. I mean, if we take a step back and we look at the Bessemer Emerging Cloud Index, this represents the 78 best cloud software companies in the public market. Those are down about 28% year to date, but the top quartile performers are garnering about 11X forward revenue multiple. That's down from 23 times in Q4 of last year. So as you guys have been talking about all day, as interest rates go up, cost of capital goes up, companies that have a widening bridge towards that pathway to profitability and free cash flow generation, they're going to be penalized even more harshly by the street. So as we enter the summer months and we're looking at software, we're really analyzing companies to that rule of 40 to make sure that top line growth rate and their profit margin are healthy as they think about the quarters ahead. Elliot, it's great to have you. It's Deirdre. What about um, the IPO market? I know that you think that that could reopen in the third quarter. What leads to that, especially as we start to see valuations in private markets follow their public counterparts? Um, do you think that some of your portfolio companies and some of the bigger unicorns are going to have to readjust, re-rate themselves, and that's how the IPO market opens? Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, what we're going to see is a stabilization of, of valuations as we go into the second half of the year in Q3 and Q4. But there's a couple of companies that follow kind of their predecessors from 2020 and 2021. Two companies that come top to mind. One is Service Titan. This is a vertical SaaS company going after field service workers. So, you know, plumbers, electricians, people that do gardening and landscaping. It's the predominant player in the space. Uh, they have a great software solution. And at massive scale, they're able to um, add new attach rates and new revenue SKUs. So they can compound growth regardless of whether valuations are up, down in the, in the quarter. They have a long uh, kind of bridge ahead of them. In terms of another company I really like in the data infrastructure space, Databricks. This is a company that's achieved, at least mm -hmm. in January, the CEO said they'd surpassed 800 million of ARR, compounding growth, uh, great net, uh, net dollar retention above 40%. These are two companies that I think, despite kind of interest rates changing, some global macro uncertainty that we're still going to face in the second half of the year, these are great stable companies that follow kind of their predecessors from the 2020-21 cohort. We spent the last couple of days talking about uh, average valuation multiples in cybersecurity. Do you think at this point those are overextended? No, you know what's funny, um, a Citibank report came out recently that said 78% of CTOs and IT security specialists are finding it harder and harder to secure their networks as their employees are working from home or remote locations. So what you're seeing is efficiency scores well north of 40%. Actually, the, the cybersecurity average in the M cloud right now is about 63%. So again, that's really strong um, top line growth because the problem is unfortunately only getting bigger for enterprises, but also these companies are able to generate free cash flows. So, you know, vis-a-vis -vis the, the general uh, artificial intelligence or RPA space, the cybersecurity category is outperforming and all, all indications in the macro economy show that they've got a long runway ahead of them. That's some good actionable ideas, Elliot. We appreciate that very much. Look forward to next time. All right, Elliot thank Robinson you guys. joining us from Bessemer.